We're going to turn now to a high-profile Canadian court case with international implications. Tomorrow, a B.C. Supreme Court judge will deliver a highly anticipated ruling concerning the extradition trial of Huawei executive Meng Wanzhou. The U.S. Department of Justice is seeking Meng's extradition on fraud charges, which has added significant friction to Canada's relationship with China. With more on the story, I'm joined by the CBC's Jason Proctor. He's been following this case since the beginning. Hi, Jason. Great to have you with us. Thanks for having me, Vashi. So help us understand, what specifically is the judge expected to rule on tomorrow? So this is a ruling on something called double criminality, which is basically one of the core planks of extradition. And it's the idea that in order to send somebody to the United States, the offense that they're accused of in the United States would have to be considered a crime if it had happened in Canada. And so Meng is charged with fraud in the United States. That's in relation to allegations that she lied to um, HSBC, a bank, about Huawei's uh, relationship with what was an allegedly a hidden subsidiary that was violating U.S. economic sanctions against Iran. And so this is this absolutely key moment because basically if the judge decides that, uh, you know, double criminality is not met, then the case is over. And in uh, January, there was a week-long hearing on the issue of double criminality. And, and explain to us a bit, I guess, about what each side was arguing, what the arguments put forth were. Yeah, so basically, Mung's lawyers say that, you know, what underlies all of this is these U.S. economic sanctions against Iran, which Canada doesn't have anymore because we're part of this nuclear non-proliferation treaty, uh, you know, with Iran that the U.S. opted out of. So what the U what what the, the defense says is. If this had happened in Canada, it wouldn't be a crime because, you know, a bank wouldn't get into any trouble dealing with a company that was dealing with Iran because Canada doesn't have those sanctions. The, the, the Crown, on the other hand, the prosecution says what is actually to be thought about here is the essence of the charge. And the essence is that she allegedly told a lie to a bank and caused them a loss and that that's just fraud and that fraud is fraud no matter where you are in the U.S. or in Canada. And so so basically it's a real divide. And the, the issue with regards to economic sanctions and extradition has not really been tested before. It certainly didn't come up as any of the precedent um, in regards to this. So, uh, you know, her lawyers were saying this is the kind of case that actually tests the Canadian legal system. So really huge decision. Huge decision, and you had a fascinating article a bit earlier this week. Tell us a bit about your sense of where, uh, where, uh, how Mung is feeling, I guess, about her chances and, and what you yeah. were able to determine. Yeah, this was absolutely, again, in, in terms of the many unprecedented and odd things and twists <laughs> and turns with regards to this, uh, you know, Mung Wanzhou um, staged a photo shoot, unannounced, I should say, but we happened to, you know, have word of it, let's say, uh, that we were able to see it from across the uh, street in the bushes, basically, on the steps of the BC Supreme Courthouse, where all these proceedings have, have occurred, where normally she'd be mobbed by tons of media. So she's out there on Saturday night with a group of people posing for pictures uh, doing thumbs up and peace signs and that kind of a thing, which, you know, you can only imagine were intended for some kind of a public relations shot, perhaps. Certainly, it seems to suggest that she's feeling confident about her chances with regards to this. Very unusual, though, quite honestly, to see a defendant be essentially, you know, taking what you would consider a premature victory lap in such a major case. All right. Well, I look forward to your coverage uh, tomorrow. Thanks so much for your insights tonight. The CBC's Jason Proctor. Thank you. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.